The DR650. This was my first dual sport. Before that, I only owned street bikes. They were always fun, but I found myself wanting more. I wanted to explore back roads. I wanted to see where those trails went. I wanted to learn new skills. So a dual sport is what I wanted. And all my research for highway capable beginner dual sports pointed towards 650 singles. The DR, the KLR, and the XL650R. In this video, we will look at what I owned before the DR, what those 10,000 kilometers looked like, what went wrong, what I liked about it, and why I inevitably ended up selling the DR. We should take a look at what came before, and let me tell you, it's not that exciting. My first motorcycle came to me through a trade. I traded my beloved BMX for a 1981 Kawasaki KZ440 LTD. I can tell you right now, I got the low end of that trade. Then I bought this, the Titanic of a bike, the 1982 Goldwing Aspen Cade, weighing in at 950 pounds. I hated it. This 1985 ZN750, the smoothest riding bike I have ever ridden. This 1972 Kawasaki G3 SS two-stroke, the only bike I've ever bought that I lost money on. Lesson learned, do not buy bikes solely based on how cool you think it is. Then I bought this 1977 Honda Trail purchased to resell, but I've been holding on to it for a few years now, and I might have to keep this one. In my head, I figured I'd made around $3,000 profit after all was said and done, so that was my dual sport budget. And after owning nothing but old bikes, I figured I've spent enough time crying on the side of the road trying to fix problems with duct tape and zip ties. I decided the next bike would be a dual sport, but also the newest bike with the lowest mileage, and in and around that $3,000 range. I initially wanted a Honda XR650L, but when a 2011 DR650 came up within budget, I jumped on it. Handing the money over on an eve of a global shutdown felt slightly odd, but everyone on TV told me it would all be over in two weeks, so I'm sure it would be fine. To be honest, I didn't care if the world was invaded with frogs and locusts. I got my dual sport and nothing else mattered. Since I had parted ways with all my other bikes, the DR would be my only bike. But that's kind of why I bought it. I thought it could be a tool I could throw any job at. And over the next year and a half, I would throw everything I could at the DR650. I used it as my commuter, my trail bike, my highway bike, my city bike, even as a boat sometimes. That was definitely deeper. I would ride with dedicated off-road bikes, big adventure bikes, and just like the BMW, it had no problem getting me to the local coffee shop. The DR can find its way through most situations. Just don't expect it to be the best at anything I just mentioned. Light off-road, it does great, but when the going gets a little tougher, the weight really starts to become noticeable. Especially when you factor in stock suspension. On long off-road rides, I found it quite fatiguing battling the suspension and the weight. I would eventually upgrade to springs and that did help a lot. But you don't buy a DR650 thinking it's a 450 dirt bike. So none of this was unexpected. And at the end of the day, the bike always took me where I wanted it to go. The place I actually enjoyed the DR the most was back road exploration. I live in the prairies and we have endless range roads to explore and that is something I love doing regardless of how flat and straight the terrain is. I actually took my first solo moto camping trip ever with the DR. It took me and all my gear for thousands of kilometers without any complaint. I never woke up wondering if the bike would start or if it would leave me stranded. Unlike other moto trips I have done, I didn't have to spend my evenings working on the bike to keep it going the next day. I still keep bubble gum and zip ties in my toolkit, but I've never ended up needing them. Sure, breakdowns make great stories, but sometimes it's nice to just sit down and relax and turn your brain off. But before long, I would find ways to cause problems. I don't want peace. I want problems, always! Like I said, the DR was an extremely reliable motorcycle for me. But some things did go wrong, although I am mostly to blame.
In that year and a half, I destroyed the handlebars, broke the clutch lever, I blew the front fork seals, I completely burnt up the clutch, getting stuck on a mountain hill climb, I broke the signal lights. But overall, these are pretty common things to break when you're riding off road. <laughs> Stump. Full speed, bottomed out my shocks. And this gave me the perfect excuse to do the thing all DR owners seem to love to do, and that's spend money on aftermarket parts. All of these happy little accidents would lead me down the slippery slope of upgrading. Before I knew it, I had a bike that looked and rode completely different, and it was all very exciting. And all you have to do to achieve this new bike feeling is change the suspension, the lights, the seat, the exhaust, the parts of the carb, gas tank, handlebars, foot pegs, add risers and warmers, skid plates, fenders, and along with these upgrades come a whole new set of problems pertaining to carburetors and how to tune them properly. If you're interested in upgrading DR650, I have a video about that. I actually have a whole playlist of DR6 videos on the channel. Go check those out. So after all this praise about the DR, why would I go and sell it? Well again, that's mostly a problem I made for myself and less of a DR problem. Because the DR is such a good, simple, middle ground bike, I often find myself wondering what life is like on the other side of things. That being a lighter dual sport or a more focused adventure bike. Since starting this channel, I've gotten to ride a lot of different bikes, from the Husqvarna FE501, to the Africa Twin 1100, and a bunch in between. Riding those other bikes reveals the compromises that come along with the DR650 and that simple old-fashioned approach Suzuki took that is so appealing, but does come with drawbacks that lead to this bike being so commonly heavily modified. And when I started looking at fork swaps and internal engine upgrades, I started to think, maybe I should try something different before I dump all the money into this bike. One of the other reasons is the market for the entry level dual sports went absolutely insane in the last year and a bit when I was able to sell the DR with all of its upgrades and not really lose anything. And that's a pretty great deal when you get to ride an awesome bike for a year and a half and it costs you basically nothing. That's not to say that selling the DR was an easy decision. It was stressful not knowing if I would regret letting it go, especially after building it to the DR that I really wanted. But a big part of what makes life exciting to me is variety. Although not having it in my garage has made me a little sad at times. So would I recommend the DR650? Absolutely, I think it's a great bike and obviously I'm not alone in thinking that or Suzuki wouldn't be making it and selling them for more than 30 years. It's not going to win you any hard enduro races and if you need laser guided cruise control at 110 miles an hour to be happy, well, this isn't the bike for you. As for myself, I don't know what my next dual sport bike will be. But the DR650 will always have a special place in my memory as the bike that got me into dual sporting. So thanks for watching and follow for more like this.